Hey guys, this is Jason Creel and this is The Lawn Care Life. You know what, if you're thinking about starting a lawn business, one of the main things you're going to have to have is obviously the equipment. Well the problem is when you get online you start reading about equipment, there's just so many different opinions, so many mowers, so many string trimmers, blowers, whatever. It's just confusing, what do I buy? So I want to, in this video, give you some advice on a startup lawn care setup that can get you going in your lawn business you know and i'll be honest with you this setup is not only something you could use to start up but if you just were wanting to kind of stay small in your lawn business this is a setup that you could actually use for years or of course you could always upgrade if you want to so let's check out this lawn care setup i want to show you the equipment and talk to you about just some practical advice when you are getting a lawn care setup for your business <laughs> All right, guys, let's start off talking about the mower. This is probably one of the biggest decisions when you start a lawn care business, or at least uh, maybe for a lot of people in their mind, it's the biggest decision. I'm not sure it's, it's the decision that's going to make the difference on whether or not you're successful or not in the lawn business. But again, we want to buy a mower that is, uh, you know, that makes sense for our business and for our budget. And that's a key word is the budget, you know, so... Uh, if you have unlimited money, I mean, of course, you can go out and buy the ten, twelve thousand dollars zero turn mower that's going to perform fantastic. But you know, not all of us are on a, a budget like that. And so, uh, here is the recommendation that I make to people. Uh, and 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 I'll finish that thought in just a second. But let, let me check out that this is an X Mark Pioneer E series. Okay, so the E series is the is the lower end series, and X Mark doesn't make this mower anymore. Uh, a lot of times what you'll find is the mower manufacturers, they they have similar models, but they change the names from time to time. So I would consider this more of like a low-end commercial mower, okay? So it's going to have a, a heavy-duty deck on it, and there's going to be some similarities that you're going to find on their bigger mower, uh, you know, more full commercial mower that from Xmark would be their Laser Z. So you say, well, you know, this one as far as the differences goes you're going to see um, the tires on this pioneer are going to be smaller than you're going to find on the laser z and ultimately it's just not as fast of a mower so um, that being said uh, this is still a great mower to start out with and like i said not, not all budgets are the same so if you were to go purchase a mower like this new i mean you're probably looking somewhere in the range of fifty five hundred to six thousand dollars or a model similar to this uh, maybe maybe the 5500 would be closer you know just depends so and, and again they have an e series and an s series and a, maybe an x series and so there's you know and there's different size decks you're going to pay more for a bigger deck this is a 48 inch deck and so here's the advice i give people a lot of times um and we'll check out this mower here you see this one's in pretty good shape let me let me check uh the hour meter Okay, 179 hours. So let me let me tell you the story on this real quick. My dad uh, retired about a year ago, and he says, you know, son, I want to start a, cutting some yards on the side after I'm retired. I don't want to just sit around all day and, you know, he can play golf or whatever, but he can't go deer hunting, but you can't do that stuff all the time. So he wants to start cutting some yards. He wants me to help him find a mower, and he was looking at price them new, and I said, you know what, Dad, sometimes... Um, you know, it's doing this part time or, or again, for some of you out there, they're, they're just starting up. You don't necessarily have to go buy the, the nicest mower out there. My dad was looking to get about 10 yards and just really work part time and said that, you know, something like this would work fine. So he started pricing them, you know, looking at them on, on uh, at the dealerships and stuff and, and seeing, you know what, there, there, I can get a mower like this for maybe $6,000 or comparable to this, comparing different brands. And then there's a jump up somewhere around $8,000 to get more of a full-fledged commercial mower. So I said, well, you know what, sometimes you can find one online and, and get a, a similar, you know, the same mower, but a lot cheaper. And this is what I wanted to tell you, and it's why I tell people all the time when they're starting out in the lawn business, you know, depending on what your budget is, you can oftentimes find a, a, a very low hour mower for a couple thousand dollars less than what you could buy it new. So my dad actually got this mower from a homeowner, and I drove a couple hours to get it, but it was homeowner 
uh, used, it had 23 hours on it. Okay, so it's maybe two years old, maybe even three years old. I don't, but you know, somebody bought it and just cutting their little small property with it and 23 hours on it and got it for $3,600. Okay, so he saved a couple thousand bucks of what it would have cost him at a dealership uh, and got a, like I said, a low end commercial mower that he's very pleased with. And so he's used it now and got 179 hours on it. And I don't see any reason why it wouldn't continue to work. Now, I tell people um, when they're buying a mower for the first time starting out, I, you know, I say, you know, this one's got a Kawasaki engine. I say, you know, I personally like Kawasaki or Kola, uh, those brands. I know some people have a preference from one or the other. I, I've had good success with both brands. So, um, and I tell people I prefer a 48 to 54 inch deck. To me, that's just a versatile size that you can use on residential properties. Um, it's not so small that you can't, uh, you know, that's gonna take you forever. A lot of times you can fit in a gate on a, on a backyard if they have like a wooden privacy fence. A lot of times it's 48, will fit through there. Um, and you can even go, you know, handle some small commercial properties or some larger residential properties in it because it's it's just a good versatile size mower. So this is a 48 inch uh, mower that, you know, so I'm trying to keep a tally here of how much you get, got invested in this startup setup. So 3,600 bucks on the mower, a low grade commercial. You could also um, buy, you know, a, a even a, a full grade commercial mower that had a little bit more hours on it. So let's say you had four to five thousand to spend on a mower, but you might be able to buy, uh, you know, like a full, like an X Mark would be their Laser Z. So let's say you found a Laser Z that had 300 hours on it that was, you know, three years old that a homeowner had, and you might could get that for five thousand uh, dollars, and it's going to be faster and, and uh, you know, overall a better mower than this mower. Um, so, you know, and that's, that's another route you can take, but I personally, if I was spending somewhere between the range of three to $5,000, I, I recommend not going and buying just a, a brand new residential model mower. I would rather buy a slightly used commercial grade mower, um, that has low hours than a brand new residential model mower, just based on the way these mowers perform. So, all right, Xmark E-Series, 3,600 bucks. All right, now let's step back just a minute and look at the trailer here. Now this is a five by eight trailer, and in my opinion, um, is is a little small. Now he can actually fit his mower on here plus a push mower uh, in the back. Um, but to me, you know, if you can get a five by ten, you can easily fit a, a zero turn and a push mower. And if you're going to go to two mowers, then you're going to, you know, two like full commercial mowers, then you're gonna need um, at least a 12 foot, probably a 14 foot. So on a on a 12 foot trailer, I used to have a, a zero turn mower and then I have a walker mower, uh, which is one of the top of the line bagging mowers out there. And I could actually flip the deck up on that walker and put it on the front of the trailer and then put the uh, my mulch mower on the back and I could fit two on a 12 foot trailer, but a 14 foot would be better and even maybe a 16 uh, foot with a dual axle you could easily fit two uh, full-size zero-turn mowers on that. So, uh, but for a 5 by 8 to work, I would start off with a 5 by 10 You're looking at roughly brand new 5 by 10 trailer you can get for around $1,000, okay? So if you got 3,600 on the mower, 1,000 on a brand new trailer, a 5 by 8 is a little bit cheaper. You can obviously buy a used trailer, but in my opinion, um, trailers hold their value pretty well. So I've found that you don't really save a lot buying use i just prefer to go buy a new one okay let's check out the backpack blower here we've got a now this is what uh, my dad decided he wanted to get a, a bigger blower he wanted a big one okay so he went and bought echo's biggest blower at the time it's a, an echo pb 770t okay this is the big the big echo it's got tons of power um and, and it's a fine blower. You don't necessarily have to have the biggest one. Blower that I like and I've even, I've used on when I'm just starting out or you do a lot of residential properties and I think is, you know, a good size, is, a, is more of a mid-size blower. I use a Red Max EBZ 5150. To me, that's a good size blower that's perfect um, for, you know, residential properties. Now, if you're doing a lot of leaf cleanup or, you know, blowing off big parking lots, then yeah, you're gonna want the big boy whether it be an Echo or 
or Red Max or Steel or Shindawa, they all make big blowers. Um, but a lot of times for just doing regular everyday residential properties, I prefer the smaller one just because it still has a lot of power and it's just not so heavy. So this Echo blower here, I think these retail for around $500 plus you're going to pay tax. So, you know, they're not cheap, but they, they uh, definitely will move a lot of grass or leaves. So when you're starting off, you're going to need uh, at least a string trimmer. To get you going now some people want to want to edge with a string trimmer i've got videos out there to show you how to edge with a string trimmer um so you can if you can edge with a string trimmer then you could get by just with the trimmer and uh and use it you know for your edging as well but you see this my dad decided to invest in a nicer um string trimmer this is a the Steel FS 111RX. So this is a very nice trimmer. This retails for around $370 uh, brand new, I believe. So um, they're another good steel. If you like steel, a lot of people like steel. There's a, a Steel 94R, I believe, is one that I've heard highly recommended. I like Husqvarna. I use a Husqvarna 525LS that I really like. Um, you can see here he's got it mounted on a trimmer rack. There's a lot of good trimmer racks out there if that's something you want to invest in. But um, just a word on handheld equipment, whether it be your be your string trimmer, your backpack blower, uh, your you know an edger. We're going to get to and talk about that. To me, it makes sense to if you're on a budget. I, I tell people, you know what, let's get a slightly used zero turn mower because I think you can save thousands of dollars on that. But on your handheld equipment. You're talking about a piece of equipment that you need to, to hold up day in and day out, and you're going to be putting a lot of hours on a string trimmer. To me, it just doesn't make sense to try to save, you know, $100 on a used one. You know, unless you just found one that was sure enough very gently used. But $370 may seem like a lot of money spent on a trimmer, but if it's a piece of equipment that you're going to be relying on day after day, you know, you just, you can't have it breaking. I mean, if you saved a hundred and bought a used one and then it broke down one time and you had to put in the shop and get the carburetor cleaned out and all, you know, which those things happen. But I'm just saying to me, it's worth go ahead and spend the money, buy brand new handheld equipment. So I would get a brand new blower, brand new edge or brand new string trimmer. And if I wanted to save money, then, you know, I, I, would, I would try to get a slightly used zero turn. One other thing about the string trimmers. Now, a lot of people don't like uh, taking the guard off. I prefer to take the guard off, and I take the the uh, head off of my string trimmers, and I put on a uh, speed feed head. I really like speed feed heads. They you can load the line uh, as they advertise in 30 seconds or less. Um, you don't have to take the actual head off to load the line. You just simply cut you off a piece of string. For whatever size speed feet head on this one maybe a 12 foot piece of line feed it from one side through the other and then wind the head up very easy to load the line and i highly recommend um, the speed feed heads um, for whatever trimmer you're using so uh so we're going to check out this edger this is this is like a, this is a steel edger here that's more of a kind of their residential model steel edger so this is steel fc55 now you can upgrade and get get the a little bit better model i mean this one's works and fine but um but anyway you know steel makes good handheld equipment whatever brand handheld equipment you prefer whether it be steel husqvarna red max echo you know they're all going to make um edgers too so you can just pick up a, a commercial grade edger again you don't have to do that if you want to edge with your string trimmer um, but when starting out, if you want to make people have a great clean edge without having to, you know, worry about practicing with the string trimmer, then a stick edger, you know, can make that very easy for you. So a uh, stick edger, you know, you're looking somewhere probably in the neighborhood of $300 to get a, get a nice commercial one. And I want to talk about a push mower. Here's what I tell people. Okay, here's an important lesson in my opinion in in starting a lawn business or being successful don't feel like especially when you're starting out that you have to have a piece of equipment for every single situation so let's say you have one customer says hey i want my yard push mode so you feel like you got to go buy a push mower i want my yard bag so you feel like you got to go buy a bagging mower you know that there's not a um, you don't have to be set up for every piece of of you know every property that you may ever encounter 
I would say start off with something very versatile, like I said, like a, a 48 or 52 inch zero turn that you can do a lot of properties with. Sure, if somebody says, I want my yard bag, you know, say, you know what, man, I'm sorry, but right now we just don't offer bagging. I mean, I wouldn't go buy some kind of bagging attachment for this or go buy a walker mower or, you know, just when you're starting off just because you have one person ask you to bag. Now, if you want to use a walker mower all the time and you have that bagging capability, then fine, let's try to make money with it. But don't feel the pressure that you have to do everything. So, for instance, if you don't want to push mow and you know you don't want to push mow, then you know what just tell people i don't push mow and you might have to turn that property down you know in a polite way you say you know i'm sorry we just don't offer push mow and i would be happy to to cut it with you know my my zero turn mower and you may lose that customer and that's okay um but if you want to push mow if you think well i'm just going to do it you know a few push mowing yards i don't you know if i need to get in somebody's backyard then i just tell people go buy you know a whatever big box store get something that's got a honda engine now the hondas are with the honda engine are probably a little better this is a troy built uh, troy built with a honda engine but this mower's fine if you just need to, a push mower every once in a while to mow somebody's backyard that has a, a tight gate okay now um you obviously the commercial push mowers that are put out by x mark and toro i think honda's making a commercial push more now i mean they're better that they're, they're just expensive and to me unless you're going to be using those a lot of time i just to me i don't see the investment in doing that starting off i mean personally i don't like pushing and uh, i know i'm not wanting to get a lot of push mowing properties so i don't see the need to invest in a push mower uh, like a commercial gray one so you know something like this you can probably get for around i don't know 300 to 350 dollars um, and, and they're not, you know, great and built to last for years, but that Honda engine is a good engine. And if you just need it occasionally, uh, this mower can serve you fine. So, all right, so let's do a little math and figure out how much a, a setup like this is going to cost. This particular mower, as I said, with 23 hours on it, was my dad got for uh, $3,600. Okay, so a brand new one's a couple thousand more. But for this example, $3,600. A trailer is about a thousand new for a five by ten, so that's going to put you at forty six hundred. Let's say um, you get a push mower for four hundred, tax and everything out the door, brand new, a, a with a Honda engine, you know, not a commercial grade mower. So that's going to put you at five thousand. You go buy you a, a brand new handheld equipment. Let's say you get a three hundred seventy dollar trimmer, uh, plus tax is roughly four hundred bucks. So you're going to be at um, 5400 you buy a 300 dollar edger it's going to put you at 5700 and then you go buy a uh, if you want a blower like this it's going to cost you 500 bucks you know you can obviously get one cheaper the one i was talking about the ebz red max ebz 5150 is roughly 330 or so so maybe 350 but anyway, the point is, you're looking at a little over six thousand uh, dollars, all in all, for this setup. You know, for a, for a low grade commercial mower, um, brand new, uh, brand new blower, brand new edger, brand new string trimmer, brand new residential model push mower with a Honda engine and a brand new trailer. So not a bad setup to get you going. You can obviously spend more or less, but what I tell people is, you know what, let's focus on getting going, get some customers, get the money coming in, okay? You start making money, um, you can always upgrade your equipment later, okay? And that and that trimmer is good, good to go. You know, that backpack blower is good to go. Um, but let's say a year from now, you, you're doing great and you want to sell this mower, which is still going to have a lot of value to it, and you want to upgrade and get a, a full-fledged commercial mower, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, you know? But let's um, do that you know, once you got some income coming in. Now I'll say this, if you've got plenty of money and you want to go buy a $12,000 zero turn at the very beginning, it, it doesn't really matter to me. I'm just saying as a general principle, I like to think, let's get the money coming in. If I've got, you know, five customers, do I necessarily need the latest, greatest zero turn mower? Well, not really. I mean, this one, I've got plenty, I've got more time than I do 
money so I can, you know, use this mower if it's slightly slower than the full grade commercial mower. Well, I, you know, I've got some time. But once I get my route filled up and I'm staying busy, I got a lot of money coming in. Well, at that point, I want to look at upgrading and getting the best equipment possible to make me the most efficient. Okay. And I that's how I that's how I approach it. That's how I feel about it. Down the road, when you got the money, when the tax write-offs make a huge difference because of your income and you need the best equipment out there, then to me, that's when you start and you go buy, um, sure enough, the full-grade commercial mower. So I hope this video has helped you as far as uh, understanding what to look for in buying a lawn care setup. Shoot me your questions and, and whatever your thoughts are in the comments section. And look forward to engaging with you further. All right, if you hadn't done so, go ahead, subscribe to the channel, and even go one step further and ring the notification bell beside the subscribe button so that you can be notified when I create new videos. And I want you to check out some of these recommended videos that are coming up. There's a lot of resources out there if you're getting going the lawn care business. I have some resources on my website, start-lawncarebusiness.com, that you can check out. And leave a comment. What are your biggest challenges in uh, getting started in the lawn business and maybe you're a veteran of the lawn business Maybe you could leave a piece of advice uh, for the new people that are starting out in the comments section. Look forward to talking to you soon